Peace will fill the world when we finally understand that only from within can it be spread throughout the land. Every single person living peace in what we do, only then will our dream come true. Only then will our dream come true. Only then will our dream come true. Good morning, friends. I'm Leona Evans, minister at Unity of San Luis Obispo, an inclusive, progressive, spiritual community affirming the good in all life. Welcome to our Sunday morning live stream on this weekend after Thanksgiving. A wonderful, powerful time to celebrate all that we're grateful for. Something we might not do that often, but really is a powerful, powerful spiritual tool. So today, we're starting our spiritual preparation for Christmas. It's happening so fast, and yet it's also happening in divine order. So let's get ready for today's message. It's going to be a powerful one. Let's begin by just relaxing right where we are. Just take a deep breath and become comfortable. Relax your body. Open your mind and heart and be ready to be inspired. Be ready for you to hear the truth about who you are, that you are a spiritual being, that you were made in love, and that you're here to express your divine potential. Let's take another deep breath and relax. And let's affirm our invocation statement together. I am now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. Once again, I am now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. And so it is. Amen. Let's begin our time together with a joy song performed by Matthew J. Evans. Good morning. Today we're going to sing As So by Mark Welch. Please sing along with the lyrics on the bottom of the screen. A single breath and a single cry Open hands, then open eyes, slipping into life, hello world. Move an arm, then move a leg, bit by bit, day by day, crawl, stand, walk through the world. As seed must come before the sprout, as breath must come before the shout, as food prepares the smallest growth, belief must come before the oath, as will precedes the hand to move, awareness brings the self improve. As this universe unfolds, ah, so do I. Step by step, A to B, everything, yes, you and me, traveling this path so divine never doubting facing fear trusting process staying clear life is what it is so divine as seed must come before the sprout as breath must come before the shout as food proceeds the smallest growth belief must come before the oath as will prepares the hand to move awareness brings the self improve as this universe unfolds ah so do i ah so do i ah So do I. 
Have a great morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Matthew. That was a great job. Thank you. Well, today begins our spiritual preparation for Christmas. But this year, I think it's important to take a quick review to just establish how we in Unity and New Thought interpret Christmas, which in fact contains some important differences from the traditional Christian theology. I believe these ideas are important to discuss and review because changing the way we see things, especially related to Christmas, can be a giant leap of faith. And unless we understand why we're making these changes and agree to make these changes, the whole process can end up being confusing and and frustrating. Now, we understand in traditional Christian theology, Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, and Christmas is the time when we celebrate his birth by honoring his divine sonship and his role as our Savior. Of course, for us in unity, we understand our relationship with Jesus in a different way. While we still honor the divine sonship of Jesus, we also acknowledge our own divinity. Since we believe that all life is created by the one omnipresent, omnipotent source, which we call God or Spirit, we realize that no one person can be related to God any more closely than anyone else. Each of us is a thought or idea in God mind, and since God creates out of itself, we're each born of the same substance, life, and intelligence of God. Since God is also the essence of unconditional love, we realize that love is equally present in all creation. Therefore, it can be said that we're all the only begotten of God, each of us in our own unique individualized way. And Jesus is regarded as our elder brother, teacher, and way shower, whose works and words remind us how to live an awakened life. We don't need to be saved, but we do need to be awakened. In this way, we honor not only the Christ, meaning anointed, in Jesus, but we honor the Christ within ourselves and all life. Instead of Jesus being the great exception, he becomes to us a great example. Clearly, this is not an easy mindset for many people. Society has been accustomed to lords, rulers, and dictators who decide the best way for humanity to live and worship and conduct ourselves in the world. Throughout history, humankind has bowed to these rulers and took it for granted that certain figures were destined to rule over others. But also throughout history, there have been those enlightened thinkers, the mystics, who have understood that each individual, no matter how humble their background, possessed an inner light, the spark of the divine within them. And by recognizing the power of that light, humanity could come together not to diminish or lord over one another, but to cooperate with one another, to bring forth that inner light within all. So, at Christmas time, Unity and New Thought students focus on developing the gifts of God inherent within us. We look to Jesus and other great prophets to remind us that the power, life, love, and wisdom that we seek outside of ourselves are all within the spectrum of our own consciousness. So, what are these gifts? Well, Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, was a great student of the Eastern mystics. And as he studied their techniques, he saw that each culture had its own form of accessing our inner powers through focusing on aspects of our own bodies. 
For example, the Hindus developed the concept of the seven chakras to illustrate how the inner light can be more fully activated within us when we practice certain principles of faith, love, and truth. In Jewish mysticism called the Kabbalah, a tree of life with its roots in heaven and its leaves on the earth is used to illustrate how ten divine emanations within us can point the way to our oneness and wholeness. Charles Fillmore decided that this concept was so important that he chose to develop one that he felt would be more familiar to a Western, more Christian way of thinking. He called this system the Twelve Powers, and he used the disciples of Jesus to represent areas of the body that would accomplish the same goals if we meditated on them and allowed the energy to transform our attitudes and behaviors. Now, one can do a comparative study and understand that no matter which framework we choose, we will be developing the same qualities, the same abilities, the same gifts of the Spirit, just named differently or maybe placed differently within our bodies. Now, honestly, I don't think one framework is more valuable than the other. What I do believe is that each of us gravitates to specific ways of expression. In other words, if we gravitate toward working with the seven chakras, this is the one we should feel free to pursue. If we resonate to the 12 powers, this is the one where we will gain the most insight. Again, not because one is better than the other, but because we embrace one more freely than the other. As I have often said, the unconditional love of spirit is so powerful that it speaks to each of us in a language that we can understand and embrace. So, we'll be talking a bit about the 12 powers today, and our goal is to become so familiar with our spiritual gifts that we can learn to own them, bless them, and incorporate them into our lives. Right now we're going to take a break and listen to some wonderful music by Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. Here's a wonderful Christmas song from Vince Guaraldi and Lee Mendelson from 1965. And Charlie Brown, Peanuts Christmas Special. Christmas Time is Here is the name of the song. One, two...
Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans, for that beautiful, powerful, wonderful song and your beautiful and powerful rendition of it. Thank you. Well, today we've been dealing with some very important topics which point us to experiencing a new paradigm in terms of our relationship with Jesus. Now, because many Christians refer to Jesus as Christ or Jesus Christ, we in New Thought like to point out that Christ is not Jesus' last name. The meaning of Christ is the anointed, and it's not the name of one person, but it refers to the spirituality in all creation. In unity, we often say to one another, I behold the Christ in you, which means I see your spirituality, your true nature. I see you rising to your full potential. I affirm who and what you really are. This means that when we refer to the man Jesus, we call him Jesus. When we refer to the Christ, we're talking about the presence of God inherent in all life. Now, one of the most important ideas that we can grasp in terms of understanding how the Christ presence indwells us is to do all we can to avoid believing that Christ can enter us or leave us depending on our behavior or state of mind. Eric Butterworth, one of Unity's most renowned teachers, addressed this problem often. He would say, Christ is not in you like the raisin in the bun. Christ is in you like the drop of water to the ocean. Again, let me say this one more time. Eric Butterworth would say, Christ is not in you like the raisin in the bun like two different substances, one that can be put in or taken out at will. Christ is in you like the drop of water to the ocean. This analogy is really important to hold on to because, as I've mentioned often, traditional religion does not often celebrate humanity. Humans are seen as inherently sinful, unable to exercise self-control or good judgment, people who must perform certain rituals or duties in order to be saved and accepted by God. Now, this has been part of the human condition for thousands and thousands of years. In order for us to really come to terms with wanting to see things differently, we need to remember often and repeatedly that we are so much more than we believe ourselves to be. If we don't make that mental and emotional shift, we will unconsciously continue to see God as an anthropomorphic being who constantly judges us and can even turn his back on us. This is what makes Jesus such a central figure in traditional theology. God it is said, is angry with humanity for the sin of Adam and has to send his only begotten son, Jesus, to suffer and die for our sins. Now, clearly, this places a huge burden on humanity, 
and one that many human beings are willing to bear. Now, please remember, this conversation is not about criticizing traditional Christian theology, because as I've said, there is a right and perfect way for each person to experience the nature of God. And just because something isn't for me doesn't mean that others are not deriving great comfort from it. What I'm saying is that our goal, which is to free ourselves from the guilt and pain associated with being human, will not come easily to us unless we make a continual and concerted effort to see things from a mystical perspective. This takes place any time we choose to remember that our true nature is spiritual, that God or spirit is principle, not personality, and that the principle of unconditional love is always present and active in our consciousness. Our goal then is not to try to gain God's forgiveness, but to celebrate the pure, unconditional love of God, even in our darkest moments. So, to quote Eric Butterworth one more time, because I think it's this important that we repeat it and internalize it, God is not within us as the raisin in the bun, but as the drop of water to the ocean. The same exact substance, life, and intelligence. We need to learn that our 12 powers or 12 divine ideas which represent our spiritual gifts are not given to us from somewhere outside ourselves as some kind of reward for good behavior. These gifts have been given to each one of us as part of our nature, part of who we are. And we use these gifts all the time, not necessarily to their highest potential, but we're always using these abilities in one way or another. In other words, the 12 powers, which are life, imagination, power, wisdom or good judgment, elimination or release, faith, love, order, will, and strength, represent our basic equipment. We were born with it. It doesn't ever leave us. We can never forget about it. Not for real, anyway. We can forget to work on our powers, but we cannot deny their existence, truly. These represent our basic equipment, and we're always acting at some level of expression within these ideas. For example, faith is one of our 12 powers. Now, faith represents the ability to believe in something or to affirm something that we have not yet seen. We can't take a picture of it. We can't describe it necessarily because we have not yet seen it. It's something that we believe, and it is one of our spiritual abilities to be able to believe it. But often, when people are struggling, we might hear them say, oh, I wish I had your faith in a positive outcome. I'm just afraid. Now, because our five sense world is one of duality, many of us tend to think that faith is always positive, and if we could just get some, we'd be much more able to cope with our challenges. But the fact is, we don't know how to get it, and we don't know where to find it. Conversely, we think of fear as a series of random anxiety-provoking provo thoughts that should somehow be swept out of our consciousness. But we don't know how to do that either. The fact is, the truth is much more simple and inclusive. We don't live in a world of two realities. We live in a unified world of ideas and perspectives 
within a spectrum of consciousness. Now, we have been convinced that faith and fear are two separate entities, but they're not. They're two aspects of the same idea. It's the same ability to believe in something we can't see. Often we're afraid of things and we don't know what they are. We have faith in things and sometimes we're not sure of what they are, but we know how it feels to go from one spectrum to, to another. What we're talking about is not two different ideas, but two different expressions of how the ideas are used. In other words, faith is the name of our ability to believe. Either we have faith in a positive outcome or we have faith, in other words, fear, in a negative outcome. The point is, it's the same faith. The only difference is in the way we're using it. Now, in the world of duality, we have to get rid of one thing in order to have another. But our goal in New Thought is not to get rid of fear, which is an aspect of faith, but to take the fears that seem to debilitate us and transform them into faith in the realm of possibilities. Not faith in the realm of disaster or fear, but faith in the realm of possibilities. Now, the first law of thermodynamics tells us that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, just changed in form. So our goal for transformation of energy is to withdraw the power we have given to our fears and affirm that we have all the faith, positive beliefs, we need to accomplish our goals. In unity, we call this affirmative prayer using denials and affirmations. Of course, we need to remember that this particular use of the term denial doesn't mean pretending our challenge doesn't exist. What it means is that we deny or release the power of that belief to control us or to have power over us. Now, here's an example of a prayer, an example of denial and affirmation. I fully and freely release and let go of the power I have given to my current fears and affirm that I have all the faith I need to pursue my goals in positive and productive ways. Let me repeat that affirmation again. I fully and freely release and let go of the power I have given to my current fears, and I affirm I have all the faith I need to pursue my goals in positive and productive ways. This is an example of denial and affirmation transforming a negative expression of energy, not negative energy. Energy is pliable and malleable. It can be anything we ask it to be. So I'm talking about an example of denial and affirmation, which is transforming a negative expression of energy to a positive one. Now we have to work with our denials and affirmations, taking them into meditation, working with them many times throughout each day, making your own affirmations, using the one from Unity or from our website. There are plenty of denials and affirmations that will give us the opportunity to practice reducing the amount of energy we expend when we live in fear and taking that energy and putting it into positive and transformative words. As we work with these exercises, we will see this change taking place within us. Now, many of you are familiar with the burning bowl. It's an example of how the transformation of energy takes place. 
When we write on a piece of paper all that we wish to release and then burn the paper, the paper doesn't go away. We watch how the paper turns into ash and a transformation takes place. It's no longer what it was. It's something different. And so in the coming weeks, as we prepare for a transformational experience at our Christmas candle lighting service, let's keep in mind the unity of spirit, the unity of all life, and the rebirth of the Christ spirit within us all. Take a deep breath now and relax as we move into our time of meditation, inner contemplation, and integration of today's message. Let us affirm, I am the Christ of God in expression. I am the Christ of God in expression. I no longer give power to any circumstance that would upset or disturb me. Everything is in divine order and all is well in my world. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. I am one with peace and tranquility. I am the Christ of God in expression. I no longer let fear rule my life. I release the power I have given to fear and affirm strength, power, and inner poise. I am the Christ of God in expression. And all is well in my world. I am one with all life. And I see the face of God everywhere I look. I no longer give power to resentment I am open, receptive, and responsive to forgiving and being forgiven.
I no longer give power to shame to bring me down. I affirm my inherent goodness as an expression of spirit. And so it is. Amen. Friends, now is the time in our service to bless the offering that we would share. Tithing, it's important to recall, is one of our most powerful spiritual tools because it affirms prosperity. Yes, I have enough to give to where I get my spiritual information. And it also affirms the law of giving and receiving. And I know that as I give, so shall I receive 30, 60, 100 fold. And so at this time of the year when it's important for us to remember how prosperous we really are, let us consider tithing to unity of San Luis Obispo. We affirm that our ministry is one that blesses human rights and we donate a portion of all of our tithes to blessing our planet and honoring the human rights within all people. So let us affirm our prosperity statement together. Freely I give, freely I receive. God is my source. Here is another one of those uh just simply beautiful songs from Michelle Legrand. Lyrics by Alan and Marilyn Bergman. I'm just going to do the instrumental this morning. It's 1971 is when it was published. One.
Michelle Legrand's His Eyes, Her Eyes, mm. titled by Alan and Marilyn Bergman from 1971. Isn't that just simply a, a gorgeous tune, Matthew? Oh my gosh, that yeah. is just so beautiful. I want to play these pretty songs. Oof. Wow, that's something. Yeah. How absolutely beautiful probably my new favorite. What an incredible writing team and what incredible musicians you both are. Thank you so much. Let's sing our peace song, shall we? Let's speak the words of our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Friends, please remember to press the like button and share your comments with us. We do look forward to hearing from you. Also, we have a brand new Get Off Your Affirmation podcast out. It's called Metaphysics of the Midterms. It's available anywhere you get your podcast, so please listen and share it with your friends. Have a wonderful week. You deserve it. Every single person living peace in what we do only then will our dream come true only then will our dream come true only then will our dream come true